We are at a time of significant economic danger. Inflation has surged to levels not seen in a generation and expectations for growth have been pared back in all regions. Real wages and consumer confidence are in freefall, adding further headwinds to growth and even raising the prospect of social unrest. Domestically and globally, we are in uncharted waters. As many surveys make clear, there are painful months ahead, as well as pressing challenges to bolster the medium and long-term resilience of economies and societies. Dramatically, in the case of persistent inflation, which has surged to levels not seen in a generation in response to a combination of demand-side and supply-side factors, this in turn has triggered a sharp tightening of monetary policy in many countries, including the United States, threatening to choke off global growth. Against this daunting backdrop, leaders face a catalog of challenging decisions and trade-offs. As policymakers seek to rein in inflation, they risk triggering a recession and a spike in unemployment. Introducing fiscal support measures for struggling households risks adding to levels of public borrowing that are already high after the outlays required by the previous crisis. Debt distress is at worrying levels among lower-income countries, increasing their exposure to additional shocks, such as climate-related natural disasters, and placing many in a vicious cycle of debt servicing costs. The aftereffects of the pandemic-era disruptions and the ongoing war in Ukraine are contributory factors in the current global economic picture. Welcome to Savvy Economist. Today in this video, we are going to explore many of the key forces currently driving the global economy and roiling the lives of people and businesses across the world. These include inflation and the cost of living crisis, food and energy security, monetary policy, labor market disruption, sovereign and corporate debt dynamics, and increasing global fragmentation. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. The economic damage from the shutdown of Russian gas flows is piling up fast in Europe and risks eventually eclipsing the impact of the global financial crisis. With a continent-wide recession now seemingly inevitable, harsh winter is coming for chemical producers, steel plants, and car manufacturers starved of essential raw materials who've joined households in sounding the alarm over rocketing energy bills. In the weeks leading up to the iPhone 14 series launch, Budding hope of a sales spurt prompted Apple Incorporated to prep suppliers for an additional 7% boost to production this year. Those plans for the new devices have now been iced. The reasons are no mystery. Europe is expected to plummet into recession. The UK's experimental trickle-down economics is spooking markets. Inflation has emerged even in Japan and US interest rates are skyrocketing. Investors are no longer in agreement with President Ronald Reagan that the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Japan recently stepped into markets to support the yen, while European politicians are even nationalizing energy companies and introducing measures to control or offset surging prices. This all comes after capital replaced lost income for workers and businesses during pandemic lockdowns. As Alan Crawford writes in Bloomberg Business Week, state intervention is back in vogue in a way we haven't seen since the early 1980s, when a toxic combination of high inflation and ballooning fiscal deficits forced a retreat. Investors have so far proved tolerant of takeovers such as the rescue of Uniper in Germany, perhaps hopeful the efforts will support economies. That's not the case in the UK, where disapproval of sweeping tax cuts has dwarfed reaction to a plan to counter gas and power bills. Friday's so-called mini-budget was indeed a flashpoint for not just investors' short-term concerns about unfunded tax cuts at a time when inflation is running close to a four-decade high, or the Bank of England's failure to contain price growth. It has also given sharp focus to their long-held fears about Britain, its current account deficit, its fractious relationship with its closest trading partner, and, above all, a mistrust of what successive politicians promise. And there's another area that certain authorities aren't keen to wade into. While Japan sought to stop the yen's plunge, it did so alone, and there is little evidence that the Biden administration or Federal Reserve plan to slow the dollar's surge even as it squeezes other economies. The ongoing plight of Argentina's poor illustrates the broad conundrum for global policymakers, whose tight labor markets often hide ugly realities underneath. Argentina's poverty rate, at 36.5% in the first half of this year, hovered a full point above its pre-pandemic level, according to government data, as Patrick Gillespie writes. Falling through the poverty line means being unable to afford a basic basket of essential goods, and in that, the outlook appears bleaker. 
Already surging inflation is on a path toward 100% in the coming months, eating away at wages and diluting robust job gains, which are mostly concentrated in low-paying sectors like tourism and retail. Against this volatile backdrop, a key question remains how aggressively central banks will feel they need to tighten policy to keep inflation expectations anchored. In the Eurozone, for example, the ECB's Consumer Expectations Survey suggests that median inflation expectations three years out are close to 3%, with mean expectations even further above the bank's 2% target at almost 5.12 at the annual Jackson Hole gathering of central bankers in August. A series of carefully calibrated remarks suggested that central banks would err on the side of caution and maintain a hawkish policy stance. Point 13, as Figure 5 illustrates, our survey shows a range of views on the likely direction of monetary policy over the next year. Very large majorities expect continued tightening in the U.S. and Europe, while in most other regions, a smaller majority expects the policy to be unchanged a year from now. China is something of an outlier here. In line with the weaker growth outlook discussed above, a plurality of respondents expects monetary policy in China to loosen over the next year. The human toll of the unfolding crisis is severe and global, and some of the starkest responses in the latest survey relate to the cost of living. In particular, respondents are near unanimous in the view that wages will fail to keep pace with surging prices in 2022 and 2023. Around 9 in 10 expect real wages to decline in low-income economies during that period. The corresponding result for high-income economies is only marginally less pessimistic, with 80% expecting further falls in real wages. Reliable wage data are patchy and subject to considerable lags, but the latest figures from around the world point to significant pressure on household incomes. This is perhaps starkest in Europe, which, as noted above, is particularly exposed to spillovers from Russia's war in Ukraine. For example, in the first quarter of 2022, real wages across the Eurozone declined by 1.7% year-on-year. The World Bank expects 2022 to be the second worst year since the turn of the century in terms of global poverty, surpassed only by 2020. It is important to note that even when inflation rates drop back from their current highs, elevated price levels will remain a challenge, particularly for those on fixed incomes. This is not just an issue for low-income countries. In the UK, for example, the central bank expects prices at the end of 2023 to be around 20% higher than two years earlier. Before this surge in prices, it had taken the preceding 10 years to record a level shift of this magnitude. These aggregate pressures on household purchasing power are exacerbated by the fact that some of the sharpest price increases have been recorded for food and energy necessities at both an individual and societal level. According to World Bank data, in July 2022 more than 125 countries recorded food price inflation above 5%, including around 90% of low- and middle-income countries and more than 80% of high-income countries. On average, food price inflation has been highest this year in upper-middle-income countries, while the acceleration of prices has been most pronounced in high-income countries. Turning to the energy sector, the outlook for prices and security of supply has been equally worrisome. Natural gas prices hit record highs for the fourth consecutive month in August 2022, up 130% from the start of the year and by almost 250% year-on-year. While these latest increases have yet to be fully reflected in electricity bills and the price of goods and services, many countries are braced for very difficult winter months ahead. Europe faces a particularly challenging situation given the previous reliance of many countries in the region on Russian energy supplies that are now being withdrawn. Energy price inflation has surged in many countries, with annual increases of 140% being recorded in Estonia, for example. Even countries with little direct reliance on Russian supplies are facing major increases in energy costs owing to trends in global commodities markets. Turmoil in the energy markets poses serious challenges to policymakers. In the short term, the priority has been to shield households and businesses from the worst of the price increases. To this end, governments have been announcing extremely expensive support schemes of various sorts, including a UK price cap that it is estimated will cost upwards of €150 Euros billion over the next two years. The current energy crisis also poses more structural and long-term challenges and dilemmas for policymakers, notably related to the diversification of energy supplies away from oil and gas. 
Notably, our survey respondents were split over whether the energy crisis would speed up or slow down the green transition. The optimistic case is that the crisis will force up the pace and scale of investment into renewable energy sources. The pessimistic riposte is that when faced with potential electricity blackouts, green criteria may struggle for traction in the short term at least, as can be seen in the fact that global coal consumption is set to return to an all-time high in 2022. The gravity of the current moment is not lost on political leaders in many economies and several have launched bold initiatives to curb price rises or to shield their populations from the worst impacts. Some of these interventions will be exceptionally expensive, particularly for countries like those in Europe that are heading into winter and so will see demand for energy surge. However, in many parts of the developing world, further spending is constrained or impossible, with some governments running out of fiscal space, reducing their ability to manage the cost of living crisis, while in other countries the backdrop of tightening global monetary policy, particularly in the U.S., threatens a spike in debt servicing costs. The current tightening of global monetary policy threatens to push more sovereign borrowers into distress as their debt servicing costs increase. Across all regions, public debt burdens have increased significantly over the past decade, with the exceptional fiscal stimulus necessary to counter the COVID-19 crisis coming after years of accumulated borrowing while interest rates were at exceptional lows. According to the IMF, the average share of general government gross debt to GDP increased by 29.9 percentage points between 2010 and 2022 in low-income economies and by 15.5 percentage points increase in high-income countries. In addition, a further increase in borrowing can now be expected in many countries as governments intervene in response to surging energy costs. We have expended most of the major issues surrounding the global inflation and economy crisis. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.